In chapter 4, we performed two tests. Our first test was between two different types of warranties, and our second test was between having the five-year full warranty and no warranty. In our first test, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. This doesn't mean that the null hypothesis is true, just that any differences between the distributions of the two populations weren't detectable in our samples, at least to a degree that we could feel confident about. We might be worried that there is a difference, and our test just couldn't detect it. When our test fails to reject the null hypothesis, but the sample distributions are actually different, we call this a type 2 error, or a false negative. To visualize this, let's pretend our samples are different and insert an imagined distribution for our second sample. In this visualization, any sample means drawn from the area highlighted in blue would show up in our test as a type 2 error. We call the area beta. The probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true is 1 minus beta. The size of beta depends on the difference between our means, the spread of our distributions, and where we set our alpha. We talked earlier about how our test might need to be more sensitive. By increasing our sample sizes, we decrease the spread of our distributions, which shrinks the beta value. Later in this chapter, we'll apply a power analysis method to estimate a better sample size for our test based on the beta value we desire. In our second test, where we compared a warranty to no warranty, we rejected the null hypothesis. In this scenario, there is a chance of a different type of error occurring, which we call the type 1 error, or a false positive. A type 1 error occurs when we incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis. The odds of a type 1 error occurring are completely dependent on our alpha. The smaller our alpha, the less chance there is of a type 1 error occurring, though this does increase the odds of a type 2 error occurring. Ideally, we don't want type 1 or type 2 errors, but in some situations, one may be preferable over the other. Imagine you're in a courtroom and you've been asked to run a hypothesis test. The results of that test will be used to decide if an alleged bank robber is guilty. In this situation, a type 2 error would mean a guilty person goes free, but a type 1 error would mean an innocent person is punished for a crime they didn't commit. In this scenario, most people tend to say that the type 1 error is a worse consequence, that we'd rather a robber go free than an innocent person go to prison. In this scenario, we might want to assign our test a small alpha. Following this video, there are a few examples of scenarios. Read the scenarios and select the error that you think has the worst consequence. While there aren't any right or wrong answers for this scenario, you'll be able to see how your answers compare to those of other students. After reviewing the results of our first test, we've decided we want to run the test again with a better sample size. While we failed to reject the null hypothesis in our last test, we still suspect that a difference might exist and that a more sensitive test would be able to pick it up. To determine the sample size for our next experiment, we're going to run a power analysis. To run this analysis, we'll need the distance between means and overlap of our sample distribution. We'll do this by determining the effect size. Effect size like with many things in statistics, can be calculated a few ways. We'll be applying the very common method known as Cohen's D. This method works when we have estimates of the mean and standard deviations through prior data or educated guesses. In this case, we have prior data from our samples of 750 visitors. Cohen's D describes the distance between means in standard deviations. A Cohen's D of 1 tells us our means are one standard deviation apart. We consider 0.2 to be a small effect, 0.5 to be a medium effect, 0.8 to be a large effect. You can also have very large or huge effects as we progress past one standard deviation. To calculate the effect size, you take the difference between the means and divide the average standard deviation of our samples. Our effect size happens to be quite small due to the large variance of our data set. We'll also set the power for our test. Statistical power, or just power, 
is the chance that our test correctly rejects the null hypothesis if the difference is real. It's directly correlated to how small our beta is. Power equals 1 minus beta. The higher the power, the lower the chance of type 2 errors. 0 0.8 is a power that is commonly used, so let's start with that, though I might be tempted to set it even higher at 0 0.9. Let's leave it at 0.8 for now, which is the same as saying we want a beta of about 0.2 or 20%. For our power analysis, we also need to determine our alpha. We'll continue with the alpha we used in the past of 0.05. Now that we understand the effect size, beta, and alpha, we just need to plug in the right statistics into a power analysis calculator. Check out the link below to a power analysis calculator and try entering the values yourself before continuing.